Hey everybody, and welcome to the Chit Chat. I'm Adam. And I'm Amanda. And today, we're going to be doing a review over Pandemic Legacy Season 2. Now, I want to say up front, this will be a non-spoiler video. We'll make some references to Season 1, but we won't spoil any of the story or reveals that you're going to see in Season 2. Uh, so, never fear. We will cut all of that out. Due to that, however, most of the components that we're going to talk about, you won't be able to see on screen. Before we did this review, we played through the entire campaign, and therefore we have a complete picture of the experience. Uh, if you want to see the components, I have done a How to Set Up Pandemic Legacy Season 2 video, and I'm going to link that in the show notes as well at the end of the video. All right, so what do you think? Let's, let's go ahead and dive in. We'll talk about the components uh, since that's kind of the first part here. Um, what do you think? I mean, I think the components for anybody who played season one are, you know, just as well thought out. They're pretty excellent as far as something you're going to only use once. Sure. The art I really enjoyed. It has sort of a post-apocalyptic feel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think everything you said is, is completely correct. The card quality is relatively high considering you're ripping several of them up. Um, all of the pawns and everything are of acceptable quality. If you've played Pandemic, they're Pandemic quality pawns. There are some unique sculpts and molds for some of the things that do come out later. Um, and those are all made out of plastic. They're all relatively well detailed. Um, you're definitely getting your money's worth in components in the box. Uh, there are eight openable things, and they all are relatively well packed with either cards or new mechanisms that come come in the form of plastic figures. So, completely agree with that, and I'm and I'm on board. Uh, so, there's not a whole lot to say about components. Like I said, I'll, I'll link the other video into the description. So, let's go ahead and let's talk about the the actual gameplay, the mechanics in this game. Mm -hmm. Um, we can give you know a little bit of an overview on that, but we'll, we'll again we'll stay away from some of the spoilers. So, I mechanically, what happens in this is a little bit different than normal pandemic. Um, you are actually placing cubes instead of removing them, so you're not curing disease, you're delivering supplies. That will sound very similar, and it will feel very similar as you're playing the game, but in many ways. I enjoyed that mechanism a little bit better. It has enough of a unique feel while still keeping the spirit of Pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, so that's the main mechanism. Powers and everything are similar to many other Pandemic games. They're thematic to this game, uh, and therefore we can't really discuss them as well. But the powers are thematic, and they're well thought out, and they work, they work for the game. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I mean, the game, it feels a lot like Pandemic. I mean, you get that feel if you've played Pandemic before. You kind of get the gist of what you do. You take turns, you know, doing a few actions every turn. You can discuss everything just like you do. It's a, you know, it's a co-op game. Um, but it, it does have a unique enough feel where it feels different than base pandemic and it feels different than season one as well. It, it definitely feels like its own game in the pandemic world. Right. Now you, you say different than season one. So, so mechanically, some of the things that are different here, I think really hit on the legacy aspect. Mm -hmm. And so we can use this to dovetail in our discussion of the story, but mechanically how you reveal new locations, um, so, so basically this board starts out and you don't know and you haven't seen much of the world. You see that kind of on the back of the box. Mm -hmm. um, it's, got, it's got only portions of the map uncovered. The mechanisms for uncovering new pieces of that map are very different than they were in Season 1. The mechanisms for advancing the story mm -hmm. are very different than Season 1. But I think if you're paying attention to the story, as you're reading it, that they come across really well, but it, but it really focuses more on listening to the story mm -hmm. and reacting to that and, and doing what the story pushes you to do versus just kind of solving an objective. Mm -hmm. There's definitely metagame to season two, whereas I didn't feel like there was that much metagame in season one. Yeah. Season one, some of the mechanics of the game felt a little tedious. You were just completing it for completing its sake. 
Whereas I think they fixed that issue in season two, where obviously you still have objectives to complete, but they got rid of that just kind of bogged down that season one had and they the mechanism is just a lot smoother and like you said more thematic i agree yeah mm -hmm. smoother thematic definitely the way i would describe this mm -hmm. improved improved by by far um you know I'm, 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 I'm honestly surprised many of the reviews and and ratings and things are giving this worse than season one and i would honestly say that that i'm i'm very shocked by that i think mm -hmm. it's a far better game um, I think maybe the novelty yes. has worn off of legacy games. That's what I was about to say. Yeah, I think that probably season one got a little higher rating because it was so new and such a novel idea. Whereas season two, they really took that idea and ran with it and proved it. And I, I do, I enjoyed it more. I thought it was better mechanics, story, components, all of the above. But since it, that novelty is worn off, it probably has a little bit lower ratings. Yeah. So, so speaking of story, what did you think of the story here? And then, and then also kind of relate that to season one. Was there more? Was there less? Mm -hmm. um, and, and kind of how did, how did you feel about the way it played out without, again, right. we're not spoiling the story here. I thought they did an excellent job of picking up the story where they left off um, and continuing. In, I mean, every month it progressed, whereas I felt like in season one, there were a couple uh, moments where you got a lot of story all at once. Right. Whereas I feel like in season two, they did a better job at slowly progressing through the story. So each month you really felt like there was something new to learn, something new to do. Mm -hmm. um, so it just kept you wanting to play more each and every month. And I, I agree. I also felt that there were story in the months that you lost. Mm -hmm. So, so in, in season one, there was never story when you lost. Um, and, I, and I honestly felt that there was never much advancement when you lost in season one. Mm -hmm. There's absolutely advancement in season two, even in games you lose. Mm -hmm. um, you're opening things, you're moving forward, you're getting story. Yeah. And obviously in season two, there are also big changes. You know, there mm -hmm. are some months where more things change than others but whereas i feel season one it was more of kind of the same the same the same and then a couple game changers right um in season two it was definitely more of a moderate progression and it kept you it kept you wanting more each and every time did you feel like there were any big moments in this one in general or or did you feel like it really was even throughout or were there were there huge reveals you felt i felt like there was one bigger reveal okay yeah i'd agree with that probably probably just one that i was really shocked about mm -hmm. shall we say everything else just did definitely felt doled out um over time mm -hmm. okay so that's that's kind of how we feel about this so far let's do if you have anything else that you want to compare it to season one for those of us who have played and then let's do our final and then do tell me if you also think they need to play season one to play season two. I know I have my opinion on that, but I kind of yeah. want to hear yours as well. One thing that I liked about season two compared to season one is that I thought that they did an even better job of making it personalizable. How is that a word? I, I mean, it's a word. Able uh, to I, be personalized. Like, see where you're going with it. Um, whereas season one, you got to name things, and that was interesting. Mm -hmm. But season two, I mean, from the very beginning, you get to choose your character's photo. You get to choose your character's abilities. Um, you get to obviously name everything, and you get to name a lot of the places on the map as you discover them. Um, but, and then throughout the game, I mean, in season one as well, you got to add, you know, different abilities. But mm -hmm. even from month number one you were personalizing your character which i thought was you know just added another aspect of a legacy game that's that's what you want to see yeah I, I i agree with that um i think you covered everything i want to on the differences honestly and i think that was a great catch I, I hadn't necessarily thought about that it's something that i think i enjoyed as we went out throughout the game but it's not something i think i was just constantly thinking mm -hmm. of but you're right there was a lot more of the customization of that it was never oh, if i want to be the medic i have to look like this guy mm -hmm. um you know it, it could be you know this female here yeah. it could be this dystopian look it could be and and your powers weren't set there weren't 
you had starting powers, but you could apply them to any character, mm -hmm. and you could build off of them in any way, and that was definitely yeah. a little more dynamic. So choosing the upgrades that would work better with the player's base ability or play style. Um, we had some fun with the character names and the character pictures, and we we, did. we made up some little backstories for our characters, and, and you know it just adds another level to a, a legacy game that you might not get with. Just oh, we're so covering that in the story. <laughs> I want to tell the story of Brendan and Jafar. <laughs> Not my character, but Jafar was the hero. Yes, yes. It, it was it was a fun it was a fun little thing to do throughout the different games is to have little backstories for all of our characters and and so I you know it's it's one thing that you really want out of a legacy game is just that that extra little ability. Okay, so I don't think you answered. Do you think they need to play season one? Oh yeah. Um, I think that you would benefit from having an understanding of pandemic. Yeah, I think if this absolutely. was the first pandemic of any kind that you played, you would be at a disadvantage. Yeah. Uh, season one, I thought ramped up a lot more slowly. Like the first month, it was really similar to base pandemic and then slowly added on more and more mechanics. Whereas season two, it, it kind of assumes that you understand the game and it, it jumps more it into it, into the legacy aspects. Um, so I, I think that you would get more out of the story having an understanding of season one. And I also think that just gameplay, it doesn't hold your hand as much as season one does as far as as far as how to play and it, how. It's a more difficult game. And like we said earlier, the metagame yeah. is a big deal where it wasn't in season one. Mm -hmm. But I don't feel like season one prepares you for that. Because again, it wasn't a thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I'm less on the you need to play season one than you are. Um, season one is great to know the backstory, but the connection, this, this game set 71 years afterwards. Yeah. You can get the gist of where season one went just by this yeah. story. And again, I think playing Pandemic is important, but definitely if you have the chance to play one or the other, or you know you might only just get to play one, this is absolutely the one I would choose. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the players in our group had never played season one, is that correct? That is correct, yes. And I felt like she really enjoyed it and got a lot out of it mm -hmm. and you know, didn't enjoy it less for having not played season one. But I think that if you want to play them both, then you should because, you know, I, I I think season one can only add to and not distract from your experience in season two. I agree, I agree. So my, my final thoughts on this one, I think I am probably gonna rate it around a nine on Board Game Geek after the entire experience. Uh, each individual game probably maybe not a nine, but the experience itself ends up making it worth a nine. Uh, if it helps, I gauged the the prior experience at an eight, so I, I ended up putting that at an eight. At the time, I think I had it higher. I had my own hype as well, mm -hmm. and I, I've since reduced that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I think that initially when I played season one, I would have said that it was the best gaming experience I'd ever had. It was just a lot of fun to, to do that legacy and to see the story evolve. Um, and I, I would say pretty similarly that season two is up there in my top five board gaming experiences. It's just a lot of fun. Awesome. Well, that's what we have uh, for you today. If you'd like to hear a little bit about our experiences in the story, spoiler heavy, uh, come back to us next time. We're going to do a spoiler review. Uh, we won't overdo the components and everything. Again, we're just going to talk about the story specifically, the different reveals, and how our game played out. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to the video, and we'll be getting a video out for you every week. Thank you.